Hey, how you doing? Good morning. Welcome to another time here. Another time here to uh, pray. Thanks for making it as we close this week and close this round of weeks. Uh, so we're last day in the 12th round of weeks. We come back up a week with a 13th round of weeks. So we're half next week. Uh, we'll take our normal sabbatical next week and we come back up a week and with a 13th round of weeks, you know. So we give God praise for seeing us through this 12th round. Um, it's been grace all along and uh, we'll give thanks. We're grateful. Uh, so we lead ourselves in a place of prayer. We've been doing a study through the book of Daniel. So I will be on Daniel chapter 6 verse 3 for some time now uh, from last week to this week. And we'll, we'll stay on it till uh, we'll come back uh, half a week to close it out. So today we're just going to look at the next beat. Because we're looking to Isaiah 11, 2, and looking at the, the spirit, the, the attributes that were, that were, I was promised that we're resident in Christ Jesus. And seeing those attributes as things that produce the excellent spirit that we saw in Daniel. So we're pretty much looking at the attributes, the spirit that was on Christ, and seeing how we can correlate how to have an excellent spirit like Daniel. Right. So we pretty much talked about the fact that there's a spirit of the Lord. Right. Number one. And the fact that every one of us can replicate the same uh, spirit of excellence because we're created in the image and likeness of God. Right. That's one side of it. Additionally, for those of us that are born without the Holy Spirit, that should make a difference in our lives. First of all, without the Holy Spirit, because Daniel did not have the Holy Spirit. He was not baptized with the Holy Spirit. It was able to produce an excellent spirit, right? Uh, but we do have the extra benefit of being born again. So we should even be able to do better than Daniel did, right? We looked then also the next one is the spirit of wisdom, right? We looked at the fact our, our wisdom uh, should benefit us in this wise, right? And we said that uh, wisdom is the way we are created, even though we're falling from that place of glory. But God says that he's willing to give it to us, if only we'll ask. So we see that wisdom is not operational in our life. It's something that God says, I want to give it to you without holding back. So it's our place to pray and seek God for wisdom to be operational in our life, right? It's not something that we need to fast and pray about because God says, I freely give it, right? If God freely gives it then I shouldn't necessarily be hitting my head on the wall for it. It's a matter of asking God and seeking God for it, right? Uh, next, we looked at the spirit of understanding, right? We looked at last week, yesterday, on the importance of understanding and how understanding can break through for us, right? That's what we looked at yesterday. And uh, lastly, to, uh, and today we're going to go to the next one, which is the spirit of cancel, cancel. Right. It, it's kind of funny that you uh, the scriptures break down those three because those three ordinarily you would think they are the same. Right. Wisdom, understanding, counsel. Right. They're in just English word. You can easily um, you can take them as synonyms. Right. From an English perspective. But you see here that they are broken down, meaning that God has more to talk to us about by breaking them down, because God will not just write something for the sake of writing it because he has written it down that means that he wants us to look at specific aspects of each that we can learn from and not just assume that they are the same all right name of jesus amen 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 thanks for praying thanks for praying you know i was just talking in the morning just still staying on data chapter 6 verse 3 and joining it with isaiah 11 2 and we've talked about we're looking at the attributes in the life of Jesus that worked out the excellent spirit in him and see what we can learn to see how Daniel worked out an excellent spirit that was seen in him by Darius. And looked at the spirit of the Lord, we looked at wisdom, we looked at understanding. The next one in that line is the, is, is the spirit of counsel. And like I said in the morning, it's very easy to confuse all three words. Right, in a sense, they are synonyms wisdom, understanding, cancer. They can easily be interchangeable in a discussion because when I have wisdom, it helps me to understand and it gives me cancer. When I have cancer, 
I can be said to be a man of understanding and a man of wisdom. When I have understanding, then I have counsel and I have wisdom. In a sense, they're interchangeable. But we see here that it's spelled out differently, talking about an emphasis, you know, by God. God said, on Jesus Christ will be the spirit of the Lord. It will be the spirit of wisdom. It will be the spirit of understanding. It will be the spirit of counsel. The word counsel is direction, the spirit of direction, right? It is not just that I'm wise, I know lofty things. It's not that I can break things down. It's also the fact that I have direction. I am strategic. I'm able to use the available resources well, right? I, I, I don't have use opportunity, right? Um, and we saw that in the life of Daniel. Daniel was one that, that was a person of prayer. He was one that depended on God. Um, we saw later on, as we'll see in the later verses, he was one that prayed every day, three times a day, with the windows open to, to, to Jerusalem. He was one that depended, depended on God, right? They can't, they, 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 as we'll see later on in this chapter six, we see that a decree was made that anyone that would seek guidance of any other person other than the king will be killed. And the Bible says that as Daniel has always done, he went into his house to pray, opening the windows to heaven, because he, he understood that the, the chief counsel, this chief direction comes from God. Every other direction is subnormal or suboptimal. The optimum direction is the counsel of the Lord is what is God saying about the situation? What is God saying about the circumstance? He was not depending on his own understanding, like the scripture would tell us that we should lean on the Lord, right? And, and depend not on our own understanding. So the word counsel is, is getting direction, is, is, is um, knowing what to do in a particular circumstance, in a particular situation, right? And for us, you know, generally it's being able to hear that still small voice. The Bible will say that there'll be a voice from behind you saying, this is what to do. This is the way to go, right? And maturity is that place where we, we tune in to hear from our intuition, our intuitive spirit, hear from a voice from within, right? The, the, the place of maturity is that place where you grow to be able to trust the counsel that comes from within you where you, you know that it's not just because every, it, things are glittering, so that's the right way, but you are not carried away by the deception of the outward nature of what you see, but you are very sensitive to what is the voice that's within you, right? An easy example is we see in Samuel, as he went to anoint the king, the sons of Jesse, right? He, he was carried away by all what he saw, and he thought, oh, this must be the one God wants. This must be the one God wants. And God said no to all of them. Right, but the one that did not look like was the one God chose. So it's not about the outward appearance. We find ourselves. Saul missed it. He saw that, oh, this beautiful king. Oh, look at this fatted cow. How can we kill it? <laughs> you know, it was carried away by what he saw, right? And, and disobeyed God because of what he saw, right? Same thing goes for Eve, right? In the first sin. He saw the fruit was good for food, right? He, 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 he was, she was carried about what she saw and she missed the counsel of God, you know? So it's very easy in our life to be carried away by what we see. Oh, someone has a very big certificate. It's this, is this. And you think that because of that, that's the one that can solve your problem, you know? And, and, you know, we all learn from the experience of life, you know? So generally speaking, you know, experience needs to buy us something. Need to teach us that it's not what you see. There is more to life than what you see. So we, we seek to hear the voice within. What is God saying about the situation, right? What is beyond what I see? What am I hearing, you know? And getting that direction from within will, will, will make a difference in our life. Then we can walk rightly and not like every other person, you know? May God uh, make his word whole in our hearts. In Jesus' name. Amen. <laughs> uh, anything you want to add, Matt? Um, good morning, sir. Good morning, you ma'am. Said it, you said it very well. And the only prayer is that 
and he desire God's direction in all my ways. As I acknowledge him, I know he will direct us well. He is not an author of of uh, of confusion. Absolutely. So I, I pray as we rely on him for our day-to-day chores, he will surely show us his mercy and direct us aright. And Amen. we will be able to get his direction. It's one Amen. thing to know that God will not do less. He will rather do what he had been known to be doing. He will Amen. always direct. I pray Amen. our ears will be open to Amen. his voice and Amen. our feet will be able to connect to his way for us in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 And, and I love the scripture in that you're, you're quoting there. I believe it's Proverbs yeah. 3, verse 5 and 6. Yeah. It says, trust in the Lord with all your heart. Yeah. And lean up on your own understanding. Yeah. So Lord, give him all your ways. Yeah. And he will direct your heart. heart. Right? Yeah. Yeah. So our place yeah. is to trust him with all our heart. Not lean on our own understanding. That is not be carried away by the glittering of things around. Then acknowledge him in the place of prayer. You know, in all that we're doing. Because if we don't invite him, he won't come. Yeah. <laughs> if we don't make room yeah. for him, he won't come. Yeah. Uh, it, it's, it, he won't come. God will never force himself on you. It I'm doesn't sure. matter who you are. He will never force himself on you. The devil will force himself, but God will not. Right. Yeah. So it's up yeah. to us to acknowledge him in all our ways. Yeah. The yeah. only one we do that will he direct our paths. Yeah. You know? Yeah. yeah. So God help us to acknowledge him. God help us to mm-hmm. rest in him. God, mm-hmm. help, God help us to overcome anxiety, mm-hmm. you know, and, and just come to a place of rest and say, God, have your way. Mm-hmm. God, have your way, you know. Mm-hmm. And then he can tell us what to do. He can lead us, mm-hmm. lead us in the part of life. Mm-hmm. May that be our portion in Jesus' name. Amen. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So we're going to take a break next week. We'll come back up a week. Okay, by the grace of God. Yes, okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye bye. God bless. Bye bye.